Hello, I'm Ian Phoenix and welcome to another tutorial. Now I've recently had a little bit of a browse on YouTube and I found a video that described how to do path track and it was just so it kind of scraped down the uh, the, the blackboard of my soul uh, watching that. So uh, as a result I've decided to clean it up and uh, make a new tutorial for you uh, and this is how you make a little platform that will, will ride over a chasm so here we go here's the little portal playground and I have made a chasm obviously with all the recent building work that's been going on a big chasm has opened up and the way for Aperture Science to fix it is to stick in an unstationary platform so, I have added three prop dynamics. Um, the two wall emitters here, and one under there, and the platform itself. And they're all prop dynamic because, and I'm going to show you now, if you go to the browse and go to the info tab, it will tell you what it can be with these checkboxes here so that's dynamic so it's got to be a dynamic otherwise it will not show and same with all these if it said that it was a dynamic and a static there is a bug currently in SDK where if you put it as a static it will not show so if it's physics and static or dynamic and static then put it as either the physics or the dynamic depending on not the static basically. If it says that it can only be static then by all means just put it as static, it's fine and that will show. Okay so there is my chasm and we are going to make it go from one side to the other and it's dead easy to do. First off you need a brush which will go over the platform area here and you need to make it a no draw so I've just got it there, but you can go to browse and use the same method as before. So that's going to cover the platform. And because it's a no draw, it will create a solid brush on top of the platform, but you won't be able to see the no draw part, which is all good, so you'll just be able to see the platform. I'm going to do control T and make it a funk track train. And we don't need to worry about anything on here for the moment, just give it a meaningful name, not Harry. Um, so um, let's call it Chasm Platform. Okay. Uh, you need to check no pitch X rot, uh, no, z no user control, and fixed orientation and is unblockable by the player. If you wanted to make it move like a, um, like the ones in Half-Life 1, you could check Half-Life 1 train and then just kind of press E on it and then um, just control it exactly like you would with the Half-Life 1 train, which is kind of awesome. Um, but for now, that's the setup we're going to use. Okay, so now to add our path tracks. Now what you need to do here, every entity that you have has an origin, which is that circle there. And if I, yeah, so if I make it um, two blocks wide, it's four units, that origin will um, intersect with this cross here. So just need to make sure that it's um, on grid. It helps if um, everything's on as on grid as you possibly can, because it makes things like this st so dead easy. So we're going to make a path track, and we're going to put it exactly where that origin was for that brush. and we're going to make another one so I'm just holding shift while dragging 
going to be about there-ish. What you can do, if you're unsure about quite where the path needs to be, you can move this thing here. It doesn't matter where it is on the map. Um, as long as everything's lined up in the end. So this needs to come a little bit over here. And or as you see I've done I've done the shift thing. But so you can get everything lined up. Just going to do get the props for a minute. Right, everything's now lined up. Okay, so we're going to just I'm just going to delete that now. So we're left with path track and the wall emitter here and the platform and the path track and the wall emitter and all that so we'll now connect them up so I'm going to call this chasm path 1 and we're going to be going to chasm path 2 chasm underscore path and our next stop target will be chasm path 2. Now if you said, right, I want this platform to just continually move, you can go to this one and you can put in um, next stop target back to this one. But if you say wanted it to stop at a particular point, you can also do that as well. Um, just by going to um, sorry. If you go to the path and go to the output, you can say on pass um, chasm platform stop, and then that as soon as that um, passes that point, the platform will stop until you start it off again by throwing it through a button or something along those lines. I'm just going to delete that. and orientation type just stick it to no change on each because otherwise it will spin round whenever it goes backwards um, right. I'm going to just put the next path, next stop target back to chasm 1 because I want it to go forwards and backwards ok um, no change to train speed the last thing we need to do is tell this platform, this no draw platform here, that the first stop target is chasm path 1. And you need to get grab hold of the platform here and parent it to chasm platform. So now when I compile that, that platform will move forwards and backwards when we set, tell it to and of course we need to now tell it to so create a logic auto and then say on map spawn chasm platform start forward and then I'm going to give it a delay of about 5 seconds And the last thing I'm going to do is just a little bit of eye candy now. We're going to create an env beam. And you can just stick that anywhere for the moment. And the other two things you need to create is our info targets. Now I use info targets a lot, not necessarily for what they're designed for. 
um, I usually use them to mark out areas because they're just almost like null entities and you can write in them and they're, they're kind of useful for that sort of thing but we're going to be using them as target points for our beam so if you go to one of the these and just give it a name of beam get one And you see, I'm starting to use these prefixes. And then, um, change your start entity on the end beam to beam target one, and the ending entity to beam target two. I want it to start on and we're going to give it a nice blue colour because I like blue width of beam I'm just going to push it up a little bit and that should be everything you need so I'm now going to um, compile the map and I will see you in game Hello and welcome back to my portal playground. And as you can see, our platform is now moving from left to right. It's probably going a little bit fast for people to actually get onto it at the moment. Um, so to remedy that, you just slow it down and create pause points on each side so it doesn't rapidly go from one side to the other. Okay, welcome back. Um, I'm going to show you now how to make those changes uh, to the level that I highlighted in the game. So if you go to your chasm platform, go to max speed, and let's just move it down to 25, so it'll be going at about the same speed as the doors um, in the main building. The other thing that we're going to change is add in, adding in um, almost like pause points, so the train will stop here, for a second and then move on. So go to your chasm path, on pass, chasm platform, stop and then add on pass, chasm platform, start forward after a delay in seconds of let's say let's give it two seconds. And what you can do is you can highlight these and then hit copy. Go to the other path and hit paste. And it's just a dead easy way of just cop very quickly copying over um, things that you don't really need to change anyway. So I'm going to recompile that and uh, show you it working in game. Hello and welcome back. Um, as you can see, our platform is moving. I've added a ramp in at the side here so that if I fall in the goo when testing this thing, then I can get out again. And as you can see, it will move across at a reasonable pace, but not so fast that you can't jump on top of it. And it will give you two seconds to get onto it before it moves back again. And uh, that's it for today. So. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it helps you with platforms.